More than any other medium, gaming is constantly innovating at a pretty unprecedented pace. Game engines, rendering techniques, detailed character models, and simply the stories that are being told can be outdated within a year or two of release, forcing developers and publishers to forever look to the future, to at least attempt to predict what may or may not catch on, or to kickstart a trend themselves. For many games, lightning strikes, and we tend to associate either said franchise, landmark, one-off, or the creators themselves for getting everything just right. But what of the other titles that attempt to line up the stars only to find that no one was looking. A good handful of the following games were certainly pretty popular, but they all displayed characteristics, mechanics, or features that set them apart from the competition in their respective time, or they were aped and innovated on years, sometimes decades into the future. So with that stuff in mind, which games completely blew you away by being ahead of the curve, only for the industry to keep thundering on without anybody else noticing? I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 underrated video games that were way ahead of their time. Number 10, Kill Switch. We tend to attribute the whole stop and pop cover system to Gears of War, but there was one title that showcased this exact trope back when Marcus Phoenix was but a glint in Epic Games' eye. 1999's Operation Winback had already laid the groundwork for hugging walls and popping out to blast enemies, but it was Namco's Kill Switch that put its variation on the same cover system front and center for all to see. All of this whilst introducing Blind Fire, another quintessential ingredient of the Gears of War formula. Sadly, despite both games showing remarkable potential, Kill Switch in particular was regarded as being truly innovative for the time, its level design and story just couldn't make a lasting impression. Not to mention, Kill Switch came across as a B-tier release, albeit with pretty awesome features, yet those things combined to mean that the industry just wasn't ready to embrace it wholeheartedly. That would instead happen with Gears of War and the Xbox in 2006, and the rest remains history. Number 9. Virtua Fighter you have to feel somewhat sorry for Sega. Back in 1993, they were bestowed some sort of power from the gaming gods as they figured out how to render a full 3D fighting game not soon after Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat were still being played religiously. Yes, these character models were primitive as hell, but back then, man, there was nothing else like it. One year later and we'd lay eyes on Tekken, and whilst a level of deep technical proficiency was never Tekken's claim to fame, it's hard to deny that despite getting there first, Virtua Fighter has played second fiddle to everything from Tekken to Mortal Kombat and even Dead or Alive ever since. If only Sega had hung back and perfected their character models, maybe it would be another story. Number 8. Def Jam Fight for New York now I have to get this in here that I am a humongous fan of Def Jam 5 for New York and I still cannot believe that Vendetta was the last thing we saw. Back to the entry itself and Def Jam Fight for New York is something of an anomaly. A fantastic Def Jam Vendetta sequel turned into more of a straight up fighter than a wrestling spin-off. All of this resulted in gameplay that was absolutely outstanding and yet it couldn't find a home. Of course, it didn't help that EA royally killed the franchise stone dead with Def Jam Icon, a woeful dance to do damage directional shift that alienated fans and newcomers alike. Still, where once it looked as though Fight for New York had proven there could be an entire genre of 3D brawlers where you'd slam opponents' heads into environmental objects and bust out over-the-top finishers, the passion fans had completely fell away, and the majority of fighters we get today are still bolted onto 2D planes. I will totally take this opportunity as well to say what the hell happened to the brawler genre? Just give me a whole bunch of environmental objects to throw dudes into, that stuff was fun even in the Minority Report game, and yes, I know no one will ever believe me. Number 7. PsyOps The Mindgate Conspiracy In what felt like a literal meeting of the minds, two telekinetically powered titles were released within months of each other back in 2004. Free Radical's Second Side took a stealthier approach to occasionally letting you mind slam a soldier or two off the walls, whereas Midway's PsyOps was a physics-based sandbox of unlimited potential. Years before Steam Greenlight would take off with any number of quirky ideas, and just as games were beginning to showcase the ragdoll physics-based delights of the Havoc physics engine, PsyOps let you pick up enemies and objects, emulate them, possess them, and so much more in between. The likes of Dishonored or Just Cause 2 would make their names on treating the AI like a plaything, but it was PsyOps that managed to build an entire game around manipulating not only your enemies, but chunks of the environment too. Exploring the world around you by flying around on a mind-controlled crate, lobbing a piece of a broken statue at foes like a giant deadly bowling ball, that was PsyOps, and it's criminal we never saw a sequel or even a remaster. Number 6. Dark Chronicle there's something about developers level 5 that makes them the fan's choice of RPG developer. From Nino Kuni to Dragon Quest, Yokai Watch to Dark Cloud, their ideas, characters, and worlds are exemplary. But you'll never catch someone mentioning them before Square Enix or Bethesda whenever asked about RPGs. Dark Chronicle then was the kitchen sink throwing sequel to PS2 launch title Dark Cloud. 
a stunning little game that adopted the zeitgeist of cell shading to color its gorgeous Studio Ghibli-esque world. Level 5 included a gigantic amount of game mechanics ranging from camera modes to procedurally generated dungeons, fishing to tactile real-time combat. Something that Final Fantasy to this day, including even number 15, has still not perfected. Almost a decade prior to Minecraft and 14 years before Dragon Quest Builders, Dark Chronicle also let you assemble a number of parts to custom build a series of villages and townships, further adding to the seemingly endless list of things to see and do. When later RPGs would adopt the same approach of just adding minigames to bulk everything out, it's worth remembering that Dark Chronicle did so with the utmost purpose, routing it all through a story and set of main characters that made everything make perfect sense. Number 5. Fahrenheit slash Indigo Prophecy and Heavy Rain Despite the likes of Gone Home, Firewatch, or Everybody's Gone to the Rapture being regarded as narrative heavyweights, it's Telltale's The Walking Dead that really takes the cake as far as revolutionizing how direct storytelling can meet with gameplay to form a full experience. Such critical acclaim tends to leapfrog David Cage and his contributions to the industry, mainly because thanks to Fahrenheit's god-awful back third, where you're tasked with fighting a physical manifestation of the internet, yes really, alongside Heavy Rain's terrible voice acting, his games never truly broke through to the mainstream. Still in service of artistic expression, Cage was the first guy to recommend players don't actually play his titles more than once. Instead, he wanted you to live with your decisions, kinda like Telltale's games. And as for quick-time events or on-screen button prompts guiding the occasional contextual animation, Cage's games had them in spades back when Telltale was still working on Sam and Max. Number 4. Sweet Home You literally would not have Resident Evil without Sweet Home. It is that simple. Developed by Capcom but helmed by Tokaru Fujiwara, he would pioneer all sorts of survival horror staples such as item hoarding, exploration, puzzle solving, sporadic save states, and of course, a constant state of threat. When time came for Capcom to enter the 3D realm, Sweet Home became the base point, as Resident Evil was designed to ostensibly be a polygonal version of that initial vision. At the start of development, Capcom even made encounters first person just like in Sweet Home, and Resi's own Spencer Mansion was directly inspired by that game's location. Naturally, as time has gone on, we tend to look back at Resident Evil as the granddaddy of survival horror. And of course, it's true that Capcom perfected all those ideas with that first game, but you literally wouldn't have it or survival horror as a genre if not for sweet home. Number 3. Shenmue For the longest time, developers were continually looking into various ways to enhance immersion. And for the record-setting budget of $70 million, the most expensive game ever made at the time, director Yu Suzuki set about crafting an epic tale where everything from stroking cats to picking up fully rendered pamphlets was interactable. This resulted in one of the most revered and culturally beloved games of all time, possibly the first ever AAA game too. But simply because of its interactive elements being so impossible to imitate, it would be years before any other titles would devote so much time, effort and money into making an environment feel alive. The Yakuza series is a fairly close approximation of Sega continuing this overall design philosophy, and you can look to the likes of LA Noir or first-person horror titles in general to see gameplay mechanics made out of scouring the environment. Still, when people say there's nothing quite like Shenmue, it comes directly from its most pioneering features being a direct product of what wasn't around at the time. Honestly as well, considering all the advancements that we've made today, how the hell they replicate this with Shenmue 3, I can't even begin to imagine. Number 2. Metal Gear Solid Obviously, Metal Gear is far, far from being an underrated game, but it's easy to forget that underneath all those crazy plot lines and robo-dinosaur boss battles is a directorial flourish that showed video games can easily rival Hollywood, and then some. Crafted by auteur Hideo Kojima, he showed how to bring a level of cinematic immersion, storytelling, actually great voice acting performances from memorable characters, all elements that would force the industry's developers to sit up and notice. There's barely a story-driven game today that doesn't owe its methods, camera placement, cutscene direction, character presentation, or overall feeling of cinematic quality to Metal Gear Solid. And all of that is worth remembering. Number 1. Crisis The game that looked at your measly home computer setup and laughed a hearty laugh. <laughs> you think you can run me on that? As developers Crytek cared not one bit that only a fraction of the populace would ever see the full potential of what they'd created. Instead, they just wanted to make the most graphically impressive game of them all for what was available at the time. To some degree, you can kinda blame Crisis for the obsession many gamers now have on frantically buying up the latest graphics cards or consoles just to match whatever top specs are available. Here was a game that no two people would be able to have the same experience with. It fostered the sort of, well, if you tweak this, then this can go higher, but oh, what about this mentality that you see with vinyl collectors forever chasing a warmer tone or a better setup for that over-the-rainbow perfect listen. Before the escapist Yahtzee Croshaw would label the PC Master Race accordingly, Crisis had already 
already laid the foundations for the aesthetic arm race that was to come.